following message is the word of God from Abiyokuta Believers Meeting, Latter Rains. Be blessed. Spirit of the living God, satisfy this longing, satisfy this hunger, satisfy this desire that our lives be truly changed in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Very brief session tonight. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. I believe with all my heart and I've had quite a busy schedule in the last few weeks. Just came from a conference um, and there has been an emphasis in my spirit that I believe is a reflection of what the Spirit of God is doing. I believe in what God is doing in Abel Kuta. I believe in the move of the Spirit that is brewing. I believe in the army that is rising. I believe in the prophetic season that this land is stepping into. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh, by the way, before I start, let me say this. Uh, I think we, let's, let's start with two scriptures that I have found myself making reference to every time I minister the word of God. Just two of them and then we'll go back to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. 20 and verse 32. If it's ever projected, you can look up and then read it. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. He says, I commend you. The apostle is speaking now. I commend you to God. And then number two, to the word of his grace. And he says, which is able to, number one, build you up. And then number two, to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So you are commended like I hand over someone to a caretaker. I hand you over my ability. All that I've been able to do is over. I hand you over to God and the word of his grace. And the first assignment is to build you up. When God comes to you, he doesn't give you things. He builds your capacity to build you up spiritually, intellectually. And then when you are built and you sustain the capacity, then it delivers to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And so that's the first thing that the word of God does. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. That's the second scripture. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 defines for us the dimensions of the knowledge of God that we should seek. In a bid to experience establishment in a believer's conference like this, we're not just randomly searching out just anything in scripture. The Bible says, is it projected there? It says that you might be filled with knowledge, the knowledge of his will. Number two, wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. You might be filled with the knowledge of his will it's important for you to discern what god is doing you don't assume pastor was sharing so beautifully about the anointing and honestly i wish he just continued i mean i i i, I just i just thought that he would continue in that flow to just bless you but let me say one thing about the anointing there are graces that come upon you not just because you are a believer, not just because of your office, but because of your alignment to what God is doing in a season. There is an anointing that confirms that you are working with God within the context of a season. So you can be anointed, you can be called into an office and find out that you are not featured in the move of God. Because there is a grace that is apportioned for seasons. And when through the sacrifice of alignment you are able to make yourself available to host God for that season, then that anointing will follow you. The anointing does not follow men. 
the anointing follows the speakings of the spirit whoever receives the speakings of the spirit will also attract the grace dimension of that anointing it looks as though it's following men but the anointing does not follow men the anointing follows the voice and the word of god so whoever receives the word of god also has access to the grace that makes that true are we together now so it matters for us to understand what we are here for much more than the the organization the excellence which is well appreciated our hearts must be open you know one of the dangers of 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 um, programs and activities is that if the people are not consistently reminded of the goal the gradually the spirit of that meeting begins to be extracted and you find out that many people no longer become blessed It's one of the reasons why i have a lot of honor and regard for all the men of god that have put this program to be able to sustain the understanding and the fire most people cannot stay spiritual in a meeting by the third edition they have lost everything they start great visions by the second year they usually start fighting because there's misunderstanding from the first edition by the third year everyone now just dismisses themselves it takes a level of synergy spiritual maturity and coordination to remain focused and this is one of the things that has happened in this conference it's true it's true hallelujah so you must understand that every time you come and sit under this anointing listening to men of god being exposed to various graces it's important to be aware of what is happening to you one of it is that god is quickening your spiritual understanding understanding is powerful is the key that activates all things in the kingdom it is not what we do but the understanding that sponsors what we do are we together now if we do not have the requisite knowledge and understanding then we will render the potentials that come from and through this faith life it will be as though god scammed us ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them so the inability to understand can erode the potential for manifesting the power and the glory of god we're here tonight to grow and upgrade capacity and enlargement are we together we're here to see things and then we're here to receive like pastor greatly shared to receive to receive more grace ezekiel 47 that a thousand cubits be a portion for you again and then you move into a deeper dimension some of us are here not necessarily just to hear but because you have you have exhausted your level you have plateaued at a realm spiritually and there is need for you to come up higher praise the lord so let's go to acts chapter 1 and verse 8 now Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are beautiful in all your ways. I sing because our lives are about to change. You are beautiful in all your ways. We we'll sing it two more times. The one who beautifies my life must be beautiful. You are beautiful in all your ways. One more time. From the depth of your heart and with understanding. You are beautiful. Hallelujah. Jesus comes back to life and then he gathers the people together 
And over a period of 40 days, the Bible says he continued his mentorship, teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. And then when you get to Acts chapter 6, 7, and 8, now he, I mean, he, they begin to ask him a question. Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he says, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. And then verse 8 says, but you shall receive. That means you can reject it. Anything receivable can be rejected. You shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then he says that power will make you witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. He says you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall receive power and ability that will cause you to be a witness my message is very simple tonight but this that i'm teaching you i say it with all humility is the present speaking of the spirit to the church it is important to know what god is saying now i will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things although ye already know them and i established in this present truth this present truth there is what the spirit is saying and the bible says when he talks not everybody has that ear so he says he that has that ear let him hear what the spirit saying what he's saying our relevance is not just tied in discovery of purpose it's not even the awareness of our call but the ability to remain relevant. The fact that you were relevant yesterday does not mean you will be relevant tomorrow. It is your ability to walk in pace with what God is saying. That's the reason why you can find out that certain people were greatly used by God. And they've not backslidden. But when the Spirit of God navigates another dimension, they seem to be edged out of what He is doing. And many times you wonder and say, what, what happened? Why are these voices silent? I can tell you sometimes it's a product of carelessness. The inability to sustain both the meekness and the discernment to stay. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. He's saying it, but I need to see it. Is God blessing us tonight? John chapter 1 from verse 4. This message will give value to our Christian experience. It will help us to live fruitful lives and it will cause us to do much for the kingdom. God wants us to be fruitful in our Christian experience. He wants us to be reflectors of His glory and His power and His grace. To be manifestors you, you, you can sit, my dear people. If you have to come up, you are going to have to do that for a very long time. So you just, just sit. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1 and then verse 4. John the Apostle is teaching us. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. The light shineth in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not read with me verse 6 and verse 7 and never forget this for the rest of your life as a believer ready one to read there was stop stop don't rush that scripture just stop there was a man so whoever that person is is a man not an angel there was a man number two the man was sent from god regardless the background regardless the situation that surrounded the arrival of that man the testimony from the mouth of the lord to his servant is that that man was sent it's a revelation to know you are sent that regardless the circumstances there was a ministry no matter how you 